Welcome back to Wall Street Training's case study, second part of our corporate valuation and corporate finance module. In the first half, if you remember, you learned the basics of corporate valuation methodologies, trading comps, deal comps, premiums pay, discounted cash flow analysis, breakup analysis. We will now take each one of those components, incorporating with our discussion on capital structure, enterprise value, as well as leverage and the basics of corporate finance and the optimal mix between debt and equity. We will now take all of those ideas and crystallize it into this case study here in which we will analyze the acquisition of UDS, Ultramarine Diamond Shamrock, an independent refiner in the U.S., being acquired by Valero Energy back in 2001. For that, let's, for first now, let's flip to the next slide in which we will look at the analysis of selected premiums paid. In the previous slide, we looked at all deals that were done in our sector that were relevant to us. Now, on this particular slide, premiums paid, sometimes what we call a prepaid analysis. We looked at this and said, let's take a look at our entire population of deals, our entire population in the last four years, three plus years, and figure out what was the premiums to those closing stock prices. This analysis was not necessarily of acquisitions done in our industry. This was all deals. We segmented between cash and stock deals to see if there was a major difference. How do we calculate these percentages over here? Very quickly. For instance, if I'm offering you $30 and your stock price was $20, this equals a 50% premium to your current stock price. However, if a week, uh, a month ago, your stock price was $15, this now means we have a 100% premium that we were going to pay on your stock price. So 100% premium. So what we did was this might be considered the one day premium and this might be considered the four weeks or one month prior. We calculated all of these percentages, then took the average and the median of all of those numbers into this table here. And again, let's quickly go back to our previous slide and take a look. Don't forget, we had our El Paso Coastal Phillips Tosco deal right here, 34 to 45, 27 to 27%. That also made it here in terms of our numbers that we looked at for our sector. And we evaluated this. One interesting trend to note is the following. In almost all cases, the one-day premium versus four weeks. The four-week prior premium was much higher than the one-day prior. This was a lower premium, and the question is why? Why was it that the four weeks ago premium was higher? If the four weeks ago premium was higher, this means that the stock price was lower. Therefore, you are paying a greater premium. If your premium here on a one-day prior was lower, that means your stock price went up since the four weeks. And of course, why? Due to rumors leakage of a potential impending deal being done or even a prior announcement intentionally by the company, that's what explains the rumors or the rumors explain why these percentages are all across the board as well as even over here and our deals announced down there or the market just speculated that there was a good deal about to arise. This premiums paid analysis is helpful in several ways. The first way that this premiums paid analysis is helpful is number one, to see if the premiums that are being offered to our company is it within the range of all other deals that were previously announced? And when you look back to these numbers, you can clearly see that they were in the range. They were in the range in a sense that we were at a 30 to 50% premium, which is definitely comparable to the deals that were done, if not on the higher end in some cases. The second way that we will use these premiums paid numbers is to figure out, well, if these were the premiums that were paid for deals that were done in our sector and all deals in overall, let's take a look at those percentages applied to our stock price to say, based on the premiums that were paid for our competitor deals, as well as all other deals in the industry that were relevant to us, large deals, then we will look at it and say, well, what is the implied value of our stock price using those premiums? Again, taking the same methodology as the trading comps and really figuring out and saying the following, let's take our competitor's numbers and apply it to our numbers and see where should we be placed our value. So if you go to our next slide, this is our summary reference range for our deal comp. 